Today I'm going to show you how I made this mythosaur skull out of two types of foam using some files that were created by SKS Props, printed at 200% scale, and then trimmed out to be used. I start with pink insulation foam. This is one inch foam. And I use the main body, which is the full size portion. I'm not following the steps that SKS Props actually calls out because he uses EVA foam for everything. And so I'm only using some of the pieces of the kit and then pretty much winging everything else myself. But this helps get the uh, scale correct. So after the first body piece, I cut out the head trim it up and then I also get the eyes cut out. I super glue the head to the main body and then I work on the nose. It would have been a lot quicker had I had a hot knife but that wasn't something I had. And then I start doing some trimming just to get rid of sharp edges. You don't have to be precise here. This is just to uh, get what you want uh, close because we're going to be covering this with air dry foam. Now because I'm not following his steps completely, this piece here I had to cut in two to add on and actually you'll see I don't get it perfectly symmetrical but I think it gives it some more character by doing it that way. The entire prop is anywhere between two and three layers of one inch foam thick at this point so it's a little it's right at three inches and then once I add the air dry foam it'll be a little over three inches because that's going to be relatively thin as it goes on. Just making sure that the super glue is holding before I move on to the next step here. Again, doing a little more cleaning up and trimming of some edges. I found that the air dry foam, I had two cans of it. One was a little older and the older can was drier and it didn't want to stick to the smooth surface of this pink insulation foam. So the trimming actually helped, but the newer canister, it didn't matter. It stuck to everything. I could have showed you five hours of me just cleaning stuff up. My 3D printed uh, mythosaur that you see on the table, that's what I'm using just as a, a guide as I'm trimming. As soon as I get done editing this video, I have a lot of cleanup to do. The floor is just covered in shavings. And now time for the air dry foam. I'm using two canisters. The top is an older canister that I had. Um, I only used a tiny bit of it, but it's probably about three or four months old, so it's not as sticky. And it kind of pulled away in areas where I didn't have a rough surface for it to stick to. I got this stuff from my local Hobby Lobby. I think it was $5 for an 8 ounce can. So with two cans we're looking at right at a pound of just this EVA foam. Because I'm putting it on relatively thin 
It only takes about 48 hours for it to dry and it created a pretty tough surface. I was very impressed with this. I have not really used much of it before. Uh, I want to go get more after playing with it. Here you can see with the new can, which is gray, it's a different color than the original can, how sticky it is. It actually was sticking to my fingers just as much as it was sticking to the uh, insulation foam. And keeping with my style and the name of my channel, Broken Tusk Garage, the one arm here, the one tusk, is going to be broke. And then I am going to do something inside the inside of the tusk so it has a, a, a texture of like a marrow that's been dried out. This is FX primer that they had next to the air dry foam. And I don't know if it was for this foam or if it's for the EVA sheets, but this is supposed to dry flexible. So if this stuff flexes, um, the primer will flex as well. So I coated the entire part. This was probably about 36 almost 48 hours after the uh, application of the original foam and then I let that dry and then I put a base coat of just a cheap white paint that I got from the craft store It was so dry in the room while I was painting that I was actually, it, the paint was drying faster than I could put it on and I could actually pull the paint off rather than spread it out. I painted the recessed areas with a black paint and then came back and finished the areas with white that I realized I had missed. And then it's time to start the weathering. I started by just taking some yellow and going into, I don't know if you want to call this the shoulder of the tusks, but it looked good in person, but when I looked on camera, you could barely tell that I had done anything with this. and I felt like something was missing. So I started to lay it on a little thicker and tried to add some shadows in the areas where bones would have been matching up with other bones. Then I decided to add some cracks to it and with my little battery powered Dremel tool with just a rotary cutoff uh, blade, I realized just how durable the shell was from the air dry foam. I mean, at the lowest setting, it barely made a dent, which is actually pretty good. Then after that, I am going to do one final wash with a brown paint that's been watered down. And I'm, although I never consider any of my projects finished, I'm going to consider this one finished. So thank you for making it this far in the video. If you have any other ideas that I could use this air dry foam with for, let me know down in the comments. Maybe it's another uh, prop that I can do and add to my collection. Thanks for watching.